Welcome, I'm Trip. Welcome back to another video. I'm very happy to see you. In this episode, we're working on the shitbox fit again. And today, I'm doing some track prep. Getting her ready for track duty if I need her to be. Goodies have here. Let's see. I have some ARP wheel studs because apparently these are kind of brittle I don't need a wheel falling off on track got some camera bolts some high temp brake fluid some track day track pads and some wheels and tiles these are the Koenig decagram I think what they're called it's a 15 by 7.5 five four by 100 I went with these because I wanted something that was somewhat inexpensive and lightweight these are pretty light and for class rules I have to go with Falcons like I had a choice between the RT660 which are these all or the 615s could win those as well but these are a more aggressive, more stickier tile. That way I can kind of keep up with everybody else. It's also the same tiles I'm running on that car. So they should be pretty good. Uh, I'm going to try out these Power Stop Track Day Spec pads. Even though I've never been a huge fan of Power Stop. Apparently some of the other fit guys are using them. So I'm gonna give them a try. I'm not, not trying to spend too much money on this project. This is why I wanted a little bit cheaper on the wheels and brake pads. But I didn't go too cheap. They're not like cheap cheap, so. I have these camera bolts. That way I can try to get a little bit more adjustment out of the front so I can try and get a little camo in. Apparently these cars like camo. So the closer to the three, negative three I can get, the better. Which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a lot more than those to get there. And of course some high temp brake fluid. You know, I don't need my brakes going spongy on me. So that should help a bit. I thought I'd ordered some stainless steel brake lines, but I guess I didn't. I must have not hit the buy button or something. You know, then I forgot about it and now it's too late. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this stuff on though. Even though I just replaced some of the lugs over there already, these are a lot better. So let's put these on. Okay, I got to fit in the garage again. I think I'm going to work on the front first, since I already have a good idea on how to do the front. And start working on those wheel studs. Of course, first step of that is Jack it up, take the wheels and tires back off, even though I just put them on. Okay, since we need to get down to the wheel studs, we're going to have to take the whole caliber assembly off and the rotor off. Uh, that way we can push these out, hammer them out, which means might as well take the caliber off of these two 12s here. Then the caliber bracket was just two 17s in the back, you can't see. And also might as well take this line, either probably 12, I think it's either 10 or 12.
this next part, there's kind of two ways you can do this. The light way and the kind of easy way. I did the easy way last time, which is just hammer these out through here. Or you can take your wheel bearing out, which is kind of pain in the ass, a lot more work. You can take the axle out, you gotta press this out, and yeah, I don't wanna do all that. The dilemma is, since you can't push them out straight, this is kind of beveled, it ends up messing up the threads a little bit, you knock them out, so getting the new one in, it's going to be kind of hard about messing up the front threads, yeah you can re-thread it if, as long as you don't mess up the front threads. If it happened, I or I might try something else. So I really don't want to pull all that up. Right, as you see, I've grind that flat and it should go in a lot easier than it was. But it's, it's even with the flat, it's still slightly cocked. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease on it, make it slide in a little bit easier. I have done this a few times with great success on different vehicles. I haven't had any issues with those. If you're worried, the grooves underneath the head, those lines, that's what's holding it into your hub. But that's pretty much what's locking it in here. The head is what keeps it from coming through that flange. So 75% of that head's still there. So that was coming through that flange, which is my thinking of it. Plus it's shedding weight. But just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you should, you know, doesn't mean, does it make it right? So if you want to remove the wheel bearing, you can do that. Okay, I got all four of my studs on and I chased all four of them with a lug nut to make sure all my threads are still good and they're great next is the rotor goes back on probably should have bought new rotors but this is kind of a low budget build so let's see how long these last I don't, I'm not sure if the factory ones or what but Feel smooth. The brakes go back together like any other brake job. So if you're watching this, hopefully you've done brakes before. But look at the difference between pads. I'd say it needed them. And these do come with these clips and some lube. So I'm going to lube these bad boys up, and throw them in, and put my caliber back on. Okay, my studs and my pads are on, but before I move over to the other side and do the opposite side, I'm still going to do this camber bolt. This setup replaces this factory one. This is just a straight bolt. This one has this little lobe in it that lets you adjust the camber. So you can leave it in and out a little bit. So let's take that out. It should be a 19.
my camera bolt in this top lobe and of course if you're not comfortable with doing alignments I'll definitely take this to a professional but if you don't mind doing it yourself what I do is I got the camera bolt in the top one I have the bottom one loosened for that one out just enough so I can kind of move it around and the plan is I got an app on my phone I got angle finder app I'll put it on the wheel hub here and adjust that bolt until I get to the lowest number possible I'm trying to get more camber out of it okay I got both of my bolts tight and snug which means I'm done with this side until we get to bleeding brakes but first I'm gonna do everything I just did on the opposite side but you don't have to come along for that since you've already seen everything everything is just milled on that side so I'll probably see you again in the back day two hey it's the next day I finished the front I didn't quite get to the wheels because I had somewhere to be today so you know I finished the front I embedded the brake pads something you have to do with with uh, track pads, so I did that last night. Make sure everything's good. And this morning I drove to Athens, Alabama, outside of Huntsville, Alabama, to go pick up some parts for the other car. The uh, FRS. It's locked. We got some parts, which, which is from a, I went to a Subaru junkyard. Shahid's parts and he also had a fit there. Uh, same color and everything. And happened to have a good headlight, which I needed. He had a good glove box and a good UV mirror that I needed. Also found a jack throwing this car. And a few things I got for the other car, for the Subaru. So that was a kind of a lucky plus. It's like a two hour drive from here. And I realized that I think I'm rubbing a little bit. So you know that tile? It's all from this sitting in a fennel. So I'm definitely going to have to roll the fennels back here for each way all my tiles. But now that I'm back, we can pull the fit back in here. That way, we can start working on the wheels and place my ARP studs. Okay, for the back brakes, you jack the car up, take the back wheels off, and bust the wheel axle nut loose so I can pull that hub assembly out. So let's. Also, taking off the handbrake helps a lot. Oops. Uh, got the drum off. Now I need to take this cover off. Might involve some hammering and chiseling off. Since the little cap has been being stubborn, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get it out without taking this off and hammer these in look like there's a lot of room back there for it to go in and for me to get this back through and through let's try that hey I got the rest done I was expecting the wheels to be holding in what they were and it being super easy. You know, you can do this like five minutes if you have all the right tools together. Not bad at all. Just don't forget to pull the e-brake off. Now, we'll put this back together and I'll move over to the other side. Okay, both of the wheels are done. So all four corners have the LP studs in them. 
so this will be good to go to the nail. But we're not down to the brakes. Next is not so fun part is I'm going to replace the brake fluid with high temp brake fluid. And which means I gotta bleed the system, or well, not bleed the system, I gotta get rid of all the old stuff, which means you gotta bleed the whole system in order to cycle the new stuff in. Which I might need help for that. So I have to ball my wife's foot to do some pumping. Well, I'm not going to go through the whole process with you guys, but I'm just going to start in his back past the corner, suck as much as I can out, then move to that side, then the front passenger door, then the driver's side, then suck as much as out, then top it off with all new brake fluid. Okay, all four brakes are bled. I got fresh new fluid in it. And I also did the clutch. Put new fluid in the clutch and bled it. And it, it kind of a little bladey anyway. It was slightly spongy from the clutch job. But almost all the fluids are new except for engine. I still need to do the oil change on the engine. So that's on to do the list. But we've almost done everything for my track prep except for wheels and tiles. Try to do those sometime this week, not sure yet. Get those mounted and test fit on the fit. You get it? Test fit? But I do have kind of a little confession to make. Originally I was going to do a wheel sway ball install as well. What's your fault? Were you going to help me with that? But I bought one. I bought a progressive wheel sway ball to do that without looking first. Turns out the car already has a progressive wheel sway ball in the back. You know, I kind of assumed it didn't have anything because I assumed wrong, you know. So if anyone needs a sway ball for 07 Fit, I have a brand new one in the box. Brand new. So yeah, so I spent a lot of money on something that I don't need. Three days later. So I want to do a test fit of my new wheels on the car before I go have my tires mounted. Make sure everything fits and clears, which it should. Tiles mounted. Now I get to test fit them with the tiles. And after I test fit them, I got a fender roll. Because I might have to massage the fenders a little bit because these tiles are pretty chunky, boy. And I really haven't had any issues with the fronts, but the wheels of these. We're up in the back. So even with these my daily wheels. A few moments later. Okay Spiles. This is like okay Spiles. Now I'm gonna play your drum set. My 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 daily wheels are already rubbing in the back when I I wanna hit go over a bump and bottom out. It's rubbing back through already. So I definitely know I haven't had to use the fender roller back there. But I'll probably do all four corners anyway, just to be safe. So let's mount these. Let's see what they look like. Okay, I got the driver's side mounted. Looks pretty good. Fitment's good. I turned the front wheel lock to lock. There's no rubbage. These are technically a smaller size than those, these are 15s and those are 16s. So, so the diameter is smaller, but it's just the width of the tile that's bigger on these. Just probably won't have any rubbage here. It's still possible having some in the back when I 
get a dip of something. So next, I'm going to try my hand at welding the fennels. Hey, I got my wheels and tires on. I got the fenders rolled. Well, not completely. I've already done this side. So I'll do the other side later. Just so I can finish up this video and wrap it up to kind of show you the final outcome. This is what it's going to look like. Still looks like a shitbox. At least it's going to be a good handling shitbox with a lot of grip. Now for a wrap up, we got new brake pads, new brake fluid, camera bolts, wheels, and tiles. And the video, which I almost forgot, last thing that makes a race car a race car. My new shift knob. Get rid of this shitty, fake, wannabe carbon fiber thing that rattles. And the trade of this other cheap knob that doesn't rattle. So, for the most part, it's almost track ready and ready to go. Hey, those don't match. What the hell? Uh, one thing I do have to do is I need to do something about the exhaust. Uh, I am going to try a new tip in a silencer and see what that does. Since uh, NCM has a strict uh, decimal, sound decimal rating, I need to try to get this car a little bit quieter because right now it's a little, a little loud, a little obnoxious. So I need to turn it down a little bit. I have a few ideas of things I'm going to try. Get it down a little bit. But what's, what, what set of wheels do you like? Bro? Do you like these bright yellow fluorescent yellow wheels? Or do you like the more subtle black wheels? I have been driving this thing to work here lately, which is why it's kind of dirty again. It's been raining the past few days. Well, I tried to clean it, as told to told. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more fit content, please. Subscribe, like the video, and come back for more fit videos. But until next time, peace out. See you later.